Blessed are they who hear the word of God and put it into action in their lives. Dear Lord, make us that people. Amen. This last month, I was uh, up in the Midwest visiting my family, uh, friends in Minnesota and Wisconsin. While I was there, I heard some very shocking news about a good friend of mine who lived in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. His name was Kerry Stevens. Kerry and his wife, Lynn, were uh, some of the first converts of, to uh, Christianity in my congregation. Kerry was a friendly, outgoing uh, individual. He had a, uh, just a great sense of humor, and everyone loved to be with him. He always worked on our outreach and evangelism committee. Kerry had two passions. Number one, and this one you probably could figure out living in Canada, he loved to play hockey. Well, he also loved to uh, fly glider planes. And I had uh, the fun experience of flying with him one day. I, I, I have to admit, it's kind of a strange thing flying in uh, a plane that has no engine. It's beautifully quiet, but still is a little strange. Kerry had just bought a brand new glider, and he was going to use it in the Canadian National Championships that are held uh, near Calgary in the mountains. During the uh, championship, the first day of the race, he was flying in his new glider, and he went into an uncontrollable tailspin. Kerry jumped out of his plane, and he pulled his ripcord, and his parachute did not open. He plunged to the earth. He was 65 years old. He left a wife and three sons and a number of grandchildren. While I was gone this past month, three of the members of our congregation were taken to heaven. Willie Brummer, Paul Schnacke, and now Judy Abrils, whose funeral will be this coming Saturday. We're never ready to hear of a loved one's death, are we? Even though we know it might be imminent, it shocks our system. And it's especially at those times that we don't know what to say and maybe what to do. Today, Jesus steps into the picture of our life and with his almighty hand, crushes the power of death before our eyes. He wants you to know and understand this subject from a heavenly perspective, top down. Jesus says to us, as he said to Jairus, do not be afraid, just believe. Do not be afraid, just believe. And the reason why is because Jesus walks with us to calm our troubled hearts. And Jesus' touch destroys even death. You know, from a worldly point of view, it looks like death is it. There's nothing more. Game over. This is not the case. This is not the truth. And the only way you can find out the truth is from the living word of God. And so this morning we read, when Jesus had again crossed over by boat to the other side of the lake, a large crowd gathered around him while he was by the lake. Then one of the synagogue rulers named Jairus, and Jairus means Jehovah enlightens. Remember this name and its meaning. Jairus came there. Seeing Jesus, he fell at his feet and pleaded earnestly with him. My little daughter is dying. And in the Greek, 
it means she is at her last, last moment, last heartbeat, last breath. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. So Jesus went with him. Quite a moving situation. There were hundreds, maybe thousands of people flocking around Jesus. Jairus was the president of the synagogue. It took 10 Jewish men to establish a church or a synagogue, a place of worship. This man had possibly seen Jesus heal the centurion servant in Capernaum or the nobleman's son, and Jairus believed that Jesus could do the same thing for his little 12-year-old daughter whose life was ebbing away. My friends, death is the ugliest, meanest, most difficult thing that you will ever face in your life. It's when you feel the most helpless because you can't change its course. It's kind of fascinating, isn't it? When, you, when we think about uh, our health care and all the wonderful medicines we have today that help us uh, get over the crud or whatever we might have, it's kind of fascinating, too, when you think about the medical world that every doctor knows that his patient eventually is going to die. And I think that's why they say that doctors are practicing medicine. There is no cure for death, and there never will be. And you want to know why? It's because death is a spiritual problem. God reveals this to us. The wages of sin is death. When Adam and Eve told God to take a hike in the Garden of Eden that they didn't need him, thank you very much, instantly they lost eternal life. All the blessings and benefits that God meant them to experience here on planet Earth. And then came the consequences of sin that our bodies would age, grow weak, and eventually die, dust you are, and to dust you will return. But Jesus steps into the picture today, and we see that Jesus goes with this man to comfort his troubled heart. What a blessing to know that when these difficult times come in your life, that you are never alone. Jesus says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He promises to make everything that you experience work out for your eternal good. And guess what? Death is the greatest blessing that comes to us. Because it means the escape from this life, from pain and sickness and disease, worry, troubles, difficulties, all gone. Jesus has turned death now into something that we have nothing to be afraid of. As Jesus was traveling to Jairus' home and the crowds were pressing on him, all of a sudden Jesus realized that power had gone out of him. This is not part of our text for this morning. But what happened is that a lady who had been wrestling for 12 years with a a very difficult medical issue, and none of the doctors had been able to help her. She believed that all she had to do was touch the hem of Jesus, and she would be healed, and it happened. And Jesus stopped right in the middle of the road, and he turned around, and he asked, who touched me? And the disciples wondered, well, how would you even know that? That power went out from you, and the lady came forward and confessed. And Jesus commended her for her faith and told her to go on and enjoy her life now free from that malady. 
Meanwhile, Jairus is waiting and his little daughter, and you could imagine that he's probably getting very nervous. Our scripture says, while Jesus was still speaking with the woman, some men came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue ruler. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Ignoring what they said, Jesus told the synagogue ruler, don't be afraid, just believe. Now this is about the worst news that any parent can ever receive that their child has died. Because our children are supposed to outlive us. And if you have gone through this in your life, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And that grief will live with you for your whole life. But in Christ, God lightens the load with the knowledge that only he can give. Those words that he spoke to Jairus after he just has been shocked with this news, don't be afraid. Just believe. Do you know that Jesus took you by the hand? At your baptism, he said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the punishment that you deserve because of your sins. Don't be afraid of death or hell because I have freed you from them by my death on the cross and my resurrection on Easter morning. Don't be afraid of the trials and tribulations that you are going to go through in this fallen world because I am going to be with you every moment and bring you safely through them and strengthen your faith and trust in me so that you can be a blessing to others who are going through similar circumstances and can assure them of my presence. Don't be afraid. When friends betray you and your heart aches because I am your best friend, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will never turn my back on you. I will never lie to you. I will fulfill every word and promise that I have made to you in Holy Scripture. Don't be afraid when you are on your deathbed and you are wondering, where you stand with me. Remember the promises. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, even though he dies, yet shall he live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Through faith in Jesus Christ, you Have God's Holy Spirit living within you, Jesus himself. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Do you know that no other world religion teaches this, that God comes and makes his home in you now while you live on earth? Isn't that a beautiful picture and thought and idea? Only Christianity God is living within you and he's the one who enabled you to believe his promises and he is the one who is going to give you strength as you hold on to his word and his thoughts, his power and his presence. Jesus did not let anyone follow him except Peter, James and John, the brother of James. When they came to the home of the synagogue ruler, Jesus saw a commotion with people crying and wailing loudly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and wailing? The child is not dead, but asleep. They laughed at him. Why could Jesus say this? Such bold words? The people could not comprehend what he was talking about. Jesus has turned death into a sleep for all believers. And he did that 
when he offered his hands on the cross through which his holy blood poured out to cover over the sin of the world, your sin and mine, and on Easter morning rose from the dead victoriously, vanquishing death. No other human being has done this. He raised himself from the dead. So when Jesus speaks, you can be absolutely sure he will keep every word to you. He cannot go back on it, folks. This is the news. This is the information that I need for my daily life and living. This is what brings me a living hope and joy that nobody can take away from me. This gives me a quiet confidence to know where I stand with God and what his plans are for the future and that they reach all the way through eternity. What a blessing. Why can Jesus say death is just asleep? Look what he did. After he put them all out, he took the child's father and mother and the disciples who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her in Aramaic, Talitha kum, which translated means, little girl, I say to you, get up. The power is in the Word. The Word of the eternal God. Death had to leave her body immediately because the Creator was in that room. The one who loved her the most. And he brought her back to life and gave her back to her parents and then he said he gave strict orders not to let anyone know about this and told them to give her something to eat. What a blessing for these parents. And I'm sure that we may have wished that God would have returned my child, my wife, my husband, my mother, my father, my friend, back to life. But through faith in Jesus, they are alive. They are well. They are whole. They are happy. They are unburdened. They have made it home. Do not be afraid. Just believe. The story is told about uh, this man who was on a lunch break, and he walked out of his uh, building, and as he was walking along, he saw a great commotion ahead of him. Uh, cars and trucks and ambulances had rushed to the scene, and uh, he asked someone, what happened there? And he said, well, these men were digging uh, down under the foundation of a building, and it collapsed on them, and they're covered by the dirt. And the man casually put his hands in his pocket, and then suddenly... One of the workers came up and said, Dale, Dale Evans, your brother is down there. And immediately he threw off his coat and jumped down into the hole and started digging out his brother. A story to make us think about who is our brother. Who needs these words of life, comfort, hope, peace, and security. It's this whole fallen world in which we live. Do you have a friend, a loved one, a neighbor who doesn't know the end to the story of their life, who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? You and I are now given the great privilege and commission to speak these words of truth of life to them. My friends, Jesus commits us to this beautiful thought today, right? Do not be afraid. Just believe. Death is now our victory. 
Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 